Mmm, been a while since we went a real live fresh one on there. What is good? Man, I always be fresh popping. Eh, eh, maybe, maybe not. Not so much. I don't Put I don't, it in the I comments. Y'all you, you know Jay Wayne's fresh popping. I don't over recall. Here. I don't recall. I don't think so. He would do some fresh popping now and again, but it's, I mean, we used to rate pops. We used to be just popping, 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 popping. Yeah. Speaking of what's popping. How's we got, it going? We got a tripod today. We do have a tripod, and once again, it is not in the traditional form. Um, it is in the form of a guest. Uh, we have Mr. Memphis of the DM DWZ fame, the Dynasty War Zone. How you doing, man? How's it going? I'm going great, man. Uh, thank you so much for having me on. This is one of the, the first Dynasty podcasts I ever listened to back in the day. When you are on YouTube with just a picture of a player, and <laughs> beautiful, beautiful voices. Yeah. Now Very look at us. Yeah. Look at us now. We got Christmas stockings and Fucking festive as shit up in this Brad beach. Brad Keselowski's been holding it down. He's got two for your crew. Oh, that is Brad Keselowski. The the, the Santa hat threw me off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Old Brad, he's he's been he's been an OG with the podcast, but um before we get rolling here, hit us up with with a little info on on the podcast, where to find it, the Twitters, if if you're into gems, a watermelon tourmaline kind of guy or amateur astrology or if you if you think hot dogs a sandwich or whatever, you know, just hot dog is not a sandwich uh, i do know that the original number two in nascar i remember that was rusty wallace might crusty ball face myself. yeah i uh, might be dating myself a little no bit. no i like that he's on the uh, call now i think yeah oh yeah N now he looks like uh like he's got leather skin <laughs> hair, hair that looks like wool yeah but man back in the day he was a racing son of a bitch he sure was but uh the, uh, the dynasty war zone man you can find us everywhere uh our youtube channel is newer ish uh, we started it last spring, uh, mostly just live streaming the podcast. We've been doing a live stream on Sundays before the one o'clock games. We call it football Sunday school. You can come and get blessed before the start of each week. Hmm, bless we give you some game, get blessed, man. Sunday school. We, uh, we give you some gambling props. We uh, help you with start sit advice. Last week was very challenging. Like we had no clue who Craig Reynolds was. And all of a sudden there's Craig Reynolds. So we, we do all that stuff. You can follow me on Twitter at DWZ Memphis, and you can follow the show at Dynasty Warzone on Instagram and Twitter. Get up, Craig. Get up, Craig. <laughs> Craig. Craig. <laughs> hey, need to borrow your car right quick. Um, that's why preseason is important. Craig Reynolds was uh, dominating some preseason reps. Um, preseason is not important. No, it isn't. But. <laughs> Look at Terrace watch. Marshall. Craig, Craig was Craig was uh, was doing some work in the preseason though, for real. And then they they cut him, brought him back. Got an opportunity. Looked pretty good. Looked decent. They were out, they were out of guys over there. Um, so it was was a challenging, weird week last week. Um, would you? We got a we got a team with Lamar Jackson heading into. We had a bye, lost the bye, and now we got Lamar Jackson. Would you? What would you do there? Would you? Would you play Lamar Jackson or? The other options are Jimmy G and Carson Wentz, which Carson Wentz has the Patriots, which don't love that. Jimmy's got Atlanta, which isn't the worst. Um, what do you think? I mean, do, do you want drop back passer Lamar Jackson standing back there like a statue? It might be good for my Hollywood uh, stuff here. Maybe, maybe you get a, you know, he's going to be looking a little deeper for some Hollywood connection, but no, I mean, I don't think so. I mean, it could be a blessing in disguise that, you know, he needs this sometimes just stay in the pocket and let the ball go. You know, his it's first read jitterbug around, you know, maybe I can make something happen and, you know, make a really weird throw. He kind of regressed toward the end of last year in the beginning of the season. He was looking like a great drop back passer. Like that part of his game looked like it had really improved. Yeah. And then all of a sudden Miami, a couple of Thursday nights ago, started hitting him with this zero blitz. And all of a sudden he's blitzing his face off and he's been erratic. He, he lost all that confidence, it seems. And uh, like you said, I think there's been balls all over the place. So it's a good <laughs> <laughs> What's funny all over his face uh no, the place. I, I i like uh I, I do like i think i like wins a lot this weekend yeah first of pats hats off a of bye he, he's he, on a bye too a, what, what 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 off of a what does uncle bill make you do he takes away what you do best, best option the, yeah he's going to take away jonathan taylor can you I think, though <laughs> I, I you know can this you is the, this is the opportunity and, and here's i i, I think we heard the same thing with the with the Buffalo Bills. We heard it with the with the San Francisco 49ers. 
I think if, if you want to be a safe floor, you play Wentz and Garoppolo. If you're a huge dog in the matchup, you got to put Lamar out there. Carson Wentz and or Jimmy Garopp- Garoppolo in a, in a super flex is the must start of the three. Good matchup against Atlanta. Good weapons. Everybody's healthy. Kittle's healthy. Debo's back out there. Kittle's, K- Kittle's ripping off faces right now and just leaving people in, in the dust. Yeah. So you have to play him. Um, if you're a huge a huge favorite in this matchup, you play wins. And if you're a dog and need the home run play, you got to play Lamont. Yeah, we've been we've been we've been scoring the most points week in week out for the most part. So we got a pretty good lineup. Lamar's you know obviously the guy that you're leaning on at quarterback to to hopefully get you those thirties. But um, so it might be might be the safe route for us. But just a, just a quick uh, throwaway there. All right. So last week we had Robbie Jeffries on. This week we got Memphis. Uh, last week we discussed kind of aging older RB ones, that, that kind of elite section of older guys. Today we're going to turn the page into the aging wide receiver ones. Um, seems like a lot of those older running backs were still hanging on near the top of the ADP uh, when we we kind of took a look at that, uh, where the transfer of power here was a lot smoother seemingly with the wide receivers. I'm assuming that's just because there is a lot more wide receivers and the elite bell cow RB. Uh, as well as the injuries maybe have slowed the progress for some of the RBs that we were hoping to switch power. So that was kind of a theme of last week. But this week, you know, it seems like some of the elite uh, wide receivers are kind of hanging on ADP-wise, but they, they seem like they've mixed in half decent. I may disagree with some of the, the ADP on on some of the older elite guys, but we're talking guys who are 29 or older heading into next offseason. This is Devontae Adams, uh, Nuke. Cooper Cup, Keenan Allen, Mike Evans, and you know, obviously Michael Thomas didn't play at all this year. And you could, I guess, throw A Rob in that scenario, who was, you know, just a great receiver week in, week out. And I think right now he's just biding his time until he can get the fuck out of Chicago. Like, how long can I ride this hamstring out? Uh, I don't, you know, I don't know. Um, so first, we kind of talk about those guys, maybe as like a whole, the theory behind maybe an older uh, wide receiver. Do you, as far as on your existing team and in a startup? So, you know, what's your what's your general sentiments on on wide receivers as they're rolling into these 29, 30, 31 year old seasons? We've seen plenty, you know, Emmanuel Sanders, a situation. And then we've also seen plenty kind of fall off the, the, the face of the earth. So uh, what's your general sentiment here on on, on this sort of group, Memphis? I, especially if I'm contending, and I think that's a lot of thing time that people don't focus on whether they're rebuilding or contending. But if I'm contending or if I've drafted a, a startup to where I need to, I love old people. Yeah. Now, I don't I don't I don't want to go 31, 32, 33, but you get 28, 29 year olds knowing that you're going to be building around a three year competitive window. I'll take them all day. Because you're going to get you're going to get these guys. You're going to get Cooper Cup. You're going to get Hopkins and Keenan Allen as your wide receiver two or three. Because all of your not all, but most of your league mates are going to be clamoring for those young guns. They're going to be overdrafting some of the young guys coming out of college, second year players. But these are the guys that you draft. Cooper Cup's a great example. You're going to draft him in a startup in March, and you're going to get him as your wide receiver two, in a in on your actual roster. But he's going to perform like a wide receiver one. Mm-hmm. Then if the guy who you drafted to be your wide receiver one, like let's say you got a, a Justin Jefferson or a, a CD Lamb, you know, that's a great spot to be in because you know Cooper Cup's going to perform or De- Devontae Adams is going to perform as your one in a points per game basis. But that allows like CD Lamb, who's kind of in a funky spot, Dak's not been playing great and still got Gallup and, and Amari there and sometimes Dalton Schultz. It gives you that, it buys you that little bit of time. So if you want to contend while having some younger guys, these 28, 29, even 30 year olds in some cases, it depends on what kind of game they play. Like I don't love the older clasher, like Julio. Julio just looks spent right now. But like like the like the older guy, like an Antonio Brown, even that dude's aged like fine wine. Yeah. So that, that's kind of how I approach the 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 older gents. Yeah, it, I think in in startup situations again it's it's probably all all contextual where where i can end up getting these guys if i can if i can scoop up any of these guys starting in the third round i'm i'm pretty interested probably going to leave my first two picks as being probably a little bit better youth and probably a running back on one of those picks 
Um, so I, you know, as far as a startup goes, I'm, I'm staying away from those guys. It feels if Devante ends up with Aaron Rodgers again, then that, then that feels like, you know, pretty safe and pretty good. Like you said, Devante's game isn't super duper physical, uh, but it's also not relying on being this crazy Tyree kill like player. It's kind of falls somewhere in the middle there. And then, and then the rapport and the situation kind of puts you over the top to being elite for Devante Adams, Cooper cup, um, kind of similar way. And, and now seems to be the favorite of Matthew Stafford. Uh, Keenan Allen should be tied to um, the uh, where, where is he at LA here for, for the, for the next foreseeable future with a great quarterback, Mike Evans question mark there, on whether or not Tommy's going to hang around, but nobody likes him, but he's good, you know? So I'll take all of those guys. No problem. And Michael Thomas and Air and, and, and a Rob probably are going to be great values um, as far as a startup draft goes. And Michael Thomas was, it was not, not, but probably last year or so before all the injury stuff was probably the dynasty wide receiver one for, you know, a nice little chunk there. And he's, he's going to, I'm going to buy that dip. Um, and, and Michael Thomas, even though we don't know what's going to happen in, in new Orleans, but so I, for me, it's all about the value of those guys. Now, as far as, um, them being on a team that you have, how do you, how do you handle that on an existing roster? Uh, it's just, again, just all context. It's just whether or not you're re rebuilding or, or not. I look at everything and, you know, we have a Patreon over at patreon.com forward slash dynasty war zone. And we talk about three year windows and knowing where you're at within that window and being honest. Honest. Yeah. That's the, that's the hardest part for dynasty GMs is being honest because it, it, it's kind of like when you have the beer goggles, you guys are having a nice couple of cold pops there. When you got the beer goggles, you look across the bar you might think she's a nine, but you wake up the next day, she's like a five. Yeah. And if you squint at your dynasty roster just long enough, you're like, I can contend. Oh, oh yeah, I, I'm a piece away. Yeah. And, and it's being honest with yourself. But these guys, these older guys, like you're not going to get Cooper Cup right now for less than two firsts. If your league's trade de deadline's not up, you're not getting him for anything less. He has scored more points than anyone in fantasy football. The, the closest quarterback – to him and in, in your regular scoring format is 30 points behind on the season. Now that every he scored 30 more points on the season than Josh Allen, that is bananas. But here's the thing in about five weeks when the fantasy playoffs are over, he's just a 29 year old wide receiver. So if, if you're looking at competing, like you just entered your, like you were competitive, you finished in that, you know, six, seven, five, six, seven seed in, in your playoffs this year, you're going to need a piece or two next year. That, these are the kind of guys you buy in the offseason, right? These, right? these are the guys, again, that, that are going to – it's all about points per game. I don't care what their name is. I care about their acquisition costs and how many points per game I'm going to get. So with these guys, if I'm contending, I'm going to try to go after them in the offseason. And if you're going to move them, man, move Keenan Allen now off the COVID list, a top 12 wide receiver – because you're never going to get more because all of a sudden they turn back into pumpkins when they hit the off season. Nobody Number wants 29. them in the off season. Nobody like it's, you got to Got to get back in in season and them scoring points. And then you may be able to get something. But again, the, now they will be 29 or 30 heading into that season. And so no, nobody probably cares, a little but, less. Right. But, but it, so if you need them, wait until February to acquire them. And if you want to move them, like, you know, you're not contending next year. You want to get some rookie picks. You want to, you want to move a, a Keenan Allen for an Elijah Moore to a contender who could really use the extra PPR points right now with Keenan coming back off of COVID and a big matchup this Thursday. Now's a great time to do it. Cause you're not getting that deal in February. You're just not going to get Elijah Moore. The hype train's going to start. Yeah. You're, you're well, and maybe to... even if Elijah Moore wasn't on IR, maybe you wouldn't get that deal done. But he is, and on a contender, this, we've talked about this a lot. I think that's I think that's perfect what you're saying right there. You just have to. It, it's it's. It, I hate when everybody compares dynasty to the stock market, but it is kind of true. Timing's everything, and when to buy and when to sell. So that, that's how I look at these older guys. But man, they're great pieces in season to have because mm -hmm. they're the ones who help you win rosters. I mean. We'll talk about Cooper Cup here in a minute, but this guy's made me look like a genius yeah. in all of my leagues. I've been his biggest stand since 2007. If you just go to Twitter and search at DWZ Memphis, <laughs> Cooper Cup, the love. I couldn't love this man more if his last name was Young as opposed to Cup. I mean, this guy is great. But again, you know, he's winning me championships. At least I hope he's going to, but he'll be 29. 
or he'll be 29 in like June or July. Yeah, he'll and be 29 going like, into the season. Yeah, same as A-Rob, and people will hate that. But, he, but he's got a great contract. You know, his dead cap numbers, and I believe in the double digits up until 2023. Yeah, there's I mean, 8.4 million dead in 23 for Cooper Cup. So he's there through 23, I would imagine, with Stafford. Bingo. So I, I've bought myself 2022, 2023. So if you're just now starting to contend, you can't buy him now. going to cost too much. Mm-hmm. He'll get that man's in like March. Yeah, because I would not be surprised on the clock, even in like a super flex or a one QB league. We all know how rookie fever hits FOMO hits in that's uh, FOMO is the fear of missing out. And that hits and you could probably get him for like the 106 on the clock. Yeah, we're the, not that old. I know what FOMO is. That, <laughs> well, I just want to make sure I I I because my uh, my uh, enunciation and pronunciation pr- there I go again. Pronunciation is not the best. So I'll make sure that people heard the F. Yeah, in fo- FOMO. Gotcha. Right. <laughs> you want to hop in not here? the hesitation of missing out. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, I like what you did there. Yeah. Would I like to hop in? I don't. I don't know. Not yet. Would it, would it, okay. I didn't know you haven't said much, so I just was giving I'm you a just, chance to hop in here. Just listen. I, I'm just listening, loving all the Cooper Cup love because he's um, a fucking man. <laughs> I, I mean, you guys do know I have him in our one league that we're in together. Do you? I do. I have him and Justin Jefferson. Ooh. I got That's something spicy. old, something new. You I got. Like you must have got him from Tyler. Tyler was trying to get rid of uh, Justin Jefferson from, all got, day. I got him from, I want to say it was John Bauer mm. of the Dynasty Theory. I think I got him preseason for just a first, if I remember correctly. Who? Cup? Cup. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think it was like he probably. I, I think he might have just taken over that team. You know how somebody gets yes. a new team. He got an older guy. It's like, let me just get something. You know, maybe he didn't yeah. love him. And I was the right guy. I've got Cooper Boom. Cup in, in, in all my leagues. See, we're in the opposite mode in that league where we inherited a team. We we tried to make it work, and now we just got to blow it up. So there's no way we would have bought Cooper Cup, even though that's a fantastic deal. We would have had no problem spending a first if we were in our normal uh, go after win. it deal here. But, you know, we're, we're, we're sort of rebuilding in that league. And I like what you said about, you know, being honest with, with those older guys. I got a league going right now that I actually made the playoffs in, but I was not trying to make the playoffs in. Um, and I sold Devonte. I've been trying to sell Devonte Adams for half the season. And finally, you know, it got down to that point where, you know, uh, I'm trying to make it, make a move here and sold him for, for two firsts, uh, a second and, and Alexander Madison, which I think once Alexander Madison is able to break free of being with Dalvin cook, I think there could be another first, um, because he went for whatever reason people do love Alexander Madison. He's always had a fan club. So I think whenever he's either goes somewhere else or ends up being um, Minnesota's go-to guy, I think that'll be an easy flip for another first at three firsts and a two um, for Devonte Adams on a team that, you know, it's pretty good. And now I'm in the playoffs. So if I had Devonte Adams, maybe I could win some money, but it was just like, was am I going to, I felt like I was going to get in the playoffs and losing the first game anyway. And it's just like, let me just not make the playoffs, and now I made the playoffs. So, uh, but yeah, I definitely you know ca- cashed out this year. Even though next year, like I got a pretty good young nucleus of players, but it was like I'm never gonna get next year. He's gonna be 29, and nobody's. And if Rogers leaves, nobody's gonna want anything to do with Devonte Adams. So it's like I had to ship him out now, even though it hurt a little bit. I didn't. I, I, nobody wants to get rid of Devonte Adams, um, but it was either get peak value or as close to peak value as I can get or, or have to settle for, for something less um, when maybe I, I still need another year to, to quite get over the hump of, of Wump. being I, I, a good I've team. Got a, I've got a great way of, of giving the, the listeners and viewers a way of thinking about this. Older wide receivers and older running backs are the opposite of inflation. They're not going to return what you paid for them. Their value is not going up. Everything else in the world, inflation in, in the States is, you know, what increased 6%. Mm-hmm. You have to forget your acquisition cost. You have to be happy losing, quote unquote, losing value in a dynasty trade. I'll, I'll share a Devontae Adams what I did last year. I traded uh, Terry McLaren, Cole Komet. This is a super tight end premium league. Terry McLaren, Cole Komet, and an early second last year for Devontae Adams. I won a championship, humble brag. And then literally... When the, the season was over, I traded Devontae Adams for Deontay Johnson in the 108. Mm-hmm. 
And I was told I lost that trade. I, I am still tickled pink to that trade to this day. <laughs> Hell yeah. I got, the, I got the championship. I traded a wide receiver who's averaging 20 points a game now in Devontae Adams for a guy that's, I think, averaging like 17 a game. Right. And Deontay Johnson. And then so as long as points a game, as so long as you first. D- as long as you didn't take Trey Sermon with that one eight, you knocked it out of the park. <laughs> uh, th- th- this was a super flex league. Uh, I actually dr- drafted a young man named Javante Williams. Nice. Mm. So you smashed that. Fantastic. So, 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 so do you think you would get Javante Williams and Deontay Johnson for Devontae Adams right now? Not a chance in hell. Mm-mm. Right. Mm-mm. So that's, no. that's basically exactly what I'm talking about as well. And I think that's a, pr- a perfect execution of, of exactly what we're, I was trying to – expound upon but i think that was that was perfect for that for that scenario there so what do you got yeah just looking at this list of old dudes i mean i'm not out on any of them if i if i have these guys I, i'm i'm cool riding them all i mean um i'm i'm rarely trying to rebuild um i probably you know it haven't gotten there yet where the writing's on the walls and and try to be honest with myself and be open to being wrong and, and being realistic. Uh, but I think the bigger question for me is, is in a startup, you know, and, and when do you take these guys? Because I can't, I mean, you guys already touched on it. I don't think I can touch them in the first or second round. Now, the, now this list that you're, the viewers are looking at right now, it does have Tyreek on there and Diggs, um, the, the, the younger dudes, the 27 year olds, um, and, I, and I am still in. We'll be 28 rolling into the season. Right. I, I am still in on, on Tyreek and Diggs, at pretty much where you have to take them. Um, if you want to, we're going to get into a top five wide receiver discussion here. So if you're watching on YouTube, be, st- be sure to stay tuned. Hit that noty subby button so that uh, you can get the uh, notifications of when we're going to put that out, which should be the following day from here. Um, but, you know, if you wanted to put Tyreek in the top five, even though he's going to be 28 coming in next year, like, I'd be fine with that. Um, I don't think I can take Devontae and Cup where they're going, although I really want to take Cup. I defended him when we did the ADP uh, discussion. Casey and I had a pretty decent argument about it. But in the same vein, like, you can take a, a running back there that's a little older in the second round. His ADP was 22 in November. I would imagine that's probably staying where it is or even going up when December comes out here in a little bit. But if you're cool taking a a, a running back in that frame that, that could win, that could do good for two to three more years in that window of winning that you're talking about, I don't see why you couldn't take Cooper Cup too and, and, and get those mad points, which, yes, he's probably not going to have the same type of season that he's having right now, but he doesn't have to to be great. He's just out of this world right now. Um but I, I, I know you guys typically use DLF ADP. Yep. I am currently looking at Fantasy Pros ADP. Mm. Cooper Cups has shot up 34 spots. They have him as the wide receiver nine. Now, like I, I've already mentioned my love for Mr. Cup. Hopefully he wins me a lot of cash in the next three to four weeks. That's, that's what that's the goal. But you are drunk and disorderly if you have Cooper Cup in your top 15 rankings for wide receiver in a dynasty this yeah. is this is the redraft mentality I might be filtering. drunk and disorderly <laughs> might be drunk and disorderly anyway but you you can't have cooper cup in the top nine you you can't advocate for that like no. i said I, I i you again search me and cooper cup you'll you'll see my love is real but that's uh that's bad process i mean 29 gonna be 29 in a dynasty you would have to be drafting a super win now right to take him at the back end of round two in a one QB league. Yeah, agreed. That's what we were arguing. He was like, ah, I think I, I think I'm still in. And I'm like, no fucking way. You're paying for what he did this year. And he's still going to be great, but he's going to be 29 regardless. Like, and he's tied to Stafford, which is fine. But it's just like, you're just, you're paying, you're paying for what is happening right now in that cost. And he's 29 years old. So I just, I can't do it. There's just too many other options that I would rather have in that area and be, you know, fine with the results of. We need to have you lads back on the Dynasty War Zone like we did a couple of months ago during startup season so we can talk about all this process. Yeah, I love it. We uh we 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 do um we keep a mock a pretty a pretty heavy 2-3 mock a, a month window with our patrons as well. So, you know, we get we get some good feedback and some good idea of of kind of where those guys are going and it's the three of us in a in a draft. So, 
that kind of gives us a nice window against some other ADPs of like, yeah, the, these are kind of where our guys who listen to what we're saying and our theory and our process and, you know, kind of gives us, you know, a little bit different baseline. So we would, we would absolutely love that. And, uh, just to wrap up with what you were talking about, about how, you know, you're not getting the, the, the inflation costs back for Devonte Adams or those older wide receivers. But what you're like, the, the part that's missing from that equation is like you said, you're trying to win fucking money. And at the end of the day, or, or win the league, regardless if it's money or not, like that's, that's the goal. So maybe you're going to quote unquote, lose the trade, but you fucking won. And then you won again with that trade. Like, it's just, it's like you said, you don't have to win every fucking trade. Like it's, it's that's okay. Right. Like one, one of our mantras at the dynasty war zone is we lose trades to win leagues, right? That's how it rolls. I, I am not here to win the court of public opinion. I'm just here <laughs> to get the best players for both now and in my three-year window, whatever my goals are, to help me to, to help me do that. I will tell you the biggest value in this group to me, and I think he will be going forward based on his contracts, Mike Evans. The man's currently the wide receiver nine. He was the wide receiver 11 last year. He was the wide receiver 15 before that with famous Jameis. His contract's going to keep him in Tampa Bay mm -hmm. through at least 2023. And maybe Godwin's there, maybe he's not, you know. I don't, I don't think seems he like is. they're I mean, tight a little bit on cash. So. Right. I mean, we'll talk about Godwin in a bit, but I think, you know, if they make a deep run in the playoffs or win another Super Bowl, if you're Godwin, you got two rings. You got to get the bag. You I, I agree. think he was a second round pick. You got one franchise tag. They won't have the money to hit him with a second franchise tag. You got a chance it, to get it, big money. That's right. You're talking about generational money. You're talking you know, four year, five year, twenty million dollar Amari Cooper type cash. Mm -hmm. And for a guy was because you know Cooper was a first round pick, so he got the millions on the first deal. Right. That that's and and and, it, and it, normally you kind of kill these guys. Like I've killed Allen Robinson for chasing the bag before, but not in the case of like a Godwin. So I think in in that case, Evan's still going to be there. Um, it might open up stuff for guys like Scotty Miller or Darden or the kid out of uh, Minnesota. And I'm drawing Tyler a Johnson. Guys, Tyler Johnson, maybe one of those guys emerge, but I think Evans is going to be a sneaky value because he's got name fatigue. He oh, was the for sure. Receiver. People hate him. He was the People, great value. They don't he hate was him. the great they value. Like in, him. He was the great value in this last startup that you could get. So just yep. think. I think he's going. It's going to be even better on the right. next go round. And like you and said about like twenty eight. Yeah, he's he'll be twenty nine going into the season. He'll be twenty nine in August, and then, like you said, with the contract, there's four point four million dead in twenty four. So he could be there through twenty four. The thing with with Mike Evans is how much longer is Tom Brady going to play? You know, but he because did it with Jameis Winston. Yeah, it's Tom fair. Brady does it I mean, Jameis can sling it. You know, he, he can Yolo sling ball. it. Yolo ball, Yolo ball, Winston. He's right with, with pool noodles and <laughs> got yoga balls and God knows what else. Yeah. I, I do believe that he can help a young quarterback, even if they end up going down that route. And they end up keeping the one guy. Mike, I'm drawing horrible with names. The young guy they drafted in like the late second round. I think he was the last pick of the second round. Um, one of the rookie quarterbacks we've yet to see him play. Again oh, um, Kyle Trask. Kyle Trask. I mean, m maybe they, they turned the reins over to him and maybe they've had some practice reps together. Mm -hmm. So I don't worry about MT. He's like a nice piece if you're, going to be contending for the next year or two you'll get him dirt stinking cheap in the mm -hmm. offseason is there is there anybody that you're a little more out on in this group take nuke hopkins and get him out of here i agree um, if i had to pick one that would be the one that i would pick as well he, he plays a game above the rim to use an nba term but all those big falls and all that years of wear and tear you're starting to see it add up he, he played last night had five for 52 was totally outplayed by christian kirk was totally and aj outplayed. green and aj green. every time aj going, green made a catch me and jason were like oh fucking nuke and then it was like nope aj green <laughs> I, I was the same thing because i had the over 66 and a half passing yards or receiving yards last night so ask me how disappointed i was no jalen ramsey that's a smash no, you know right. <laughs> that's what i thought <laughs> right and, and and they were giving that corner number eleven Williams so much love when he was guarding Nuke, but when he was on AJ Green, AJ Green was open. Yeah, and, and and he just doesn't look right. He was going for an MRI today, and he's been banged up. He missed some and, games, and people get hurt. I, you know. you, we're, we're really game. ruffling Jason's feathers here hey, with talking trash about Nuke. And, and Nuke, <laughs> hey, I, no, I, I don't disagree with you guys. I mean, I do love Clemson, and so it's hard for me to 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 be like, yeah, I'm out on him. But I mean, if you look at his contract, 
it's the most lucrative of all these dudes. He's got 7.7 7 million dead in 2024. So as long as like they can't get out of that contract with him, they have Aaron to pay Flat. him, and he's there with, you know, with with Kyler, and I, I think he could could bounce back from being kind of injured injured a little bit this year. I mean, and he was scoring a mad amount of touchdowns, and they're just spreading the ball out to everybody. But he's just tied to Kyler, so it's hard to be completely out because the, the guy I want in this offense, we're not going to talk much about him because I don't see him on the list, but it's Rondale Moore. Mm-hmm. If I could see a guy start and getting some of that Debo Samuel yeah. type usage, that they got to build the offense Patterson. a little bit more around him. They got to focus that, it on him. They did let him I, go downfield last night, and he couldn't get those feet inbounds. But he, well, that's that's because Kyler can't see anything. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason why he doesn't attack a lot over the middle. He throws a, a beautiful deep ball because he has to. So, well, I mean, but I still do love Nuke. Uh, yeah, a great guy. But I would I would rather if I'm going to take an older guy. I would rather go out and get Brandon Cooks or Tyler Lockett or even even Adam Thielen, who are putting up similar points per game in PPR. This was uh, half the before, cost. But, 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 well, I can get something back, right? In the yeah. offseason, I can move. If I want to stay in this age range, I can move Hopkins and maybe get a draft pick. Can I move Hopkins in a third and get one of the guys I just mentioned in a first? Because what I'm getting yeah. is I'm moving a, a, a wide receiver of the same age who's going to give you 14 to 15 wide, you know, wide receiver points a game. And I'm going to get a much more valuable asset in that first. And the name DeAndre Hopkins still means something in dynasty and with fantasy gamers. So that's the kind of move I, cause I'm not altering my scoring ability on my team. I'm not adjusting my age curve, but I'm adding additional draft capital or maybe a younger player on the back end. Right. Yeah. I think that's, I think it's a, a solid uh, strategy there. Um, anybody got anything else in, in closing thoughts on the older group here? Hmm. Love Keenan for another couple of years. Well, yeah, it's, he got that money. He's mm-hmm. going to be there with a young guy. Maybe you heard of him. His name's Justin Herbert. Mm. The one guy in the NFL who has hair as beautiful as Casey's. Mm. <laughs> and me and Keenan are riding out with a baldness. So. He's trimmed yeah, up a little Rio. bit, but he's growing it back out. You know, I don't me, know. You, he looks me, like he got Keenan. split ends. We, me, you, I take this hat off. Me, you, and Keenan. It'll make people want to go shoot pool. <laughs> <laughs> Shine it up, baby. He's got that. You gotta get a good shaved head in. <laughs> anyway, we good? Anybody? Yeah. Let's let's move on to the next one. Bueller, we're moving along. Yeah. Let's do it.